This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Woman found a suffering from gunshot wound in St. Thomas. The St. Thomas police are probing the circumstances leading to the discovery of a woman suffering from a gunshot wound to her head on Thursday. She is believed to be a 24-year-old Clarendon resident who was recently reported to have been abducted somewhere between her hometown and a Spanish town in St. Catherine. It is reported that she was found about 7 o'clock Thursday morning in the Woodburn area after she crawled to the house of a resident seeking help. Upon inspection, it was discovered that she was in a battered state and had a gunshot wound to her head. Confirming the discovery, the St. Thomas police shared that she was assisted to a hospital in the corporate area where she was admitted. Her name is being withheld by the police pending further investigation. Power issue triggers passenger delays at Norman Manley Airport. A blown fuse at the Norman Manley International Airport this morning resulted in long delays in the processing of hundreds of passengers to board their flights. According to Dale Davis, the Chief Operations Officer at the Norman Manley International Airport, the issue was resolved about 7.50 a.m. It's more of a power distribution issue. The airlines are working to address the backlog. They're checking in their passengers, and as soon as the check-in is completed, then they will depart, Davis told the news. Norman Manley is one of the two main airports in Jamaica. The other is the Sangster International Airport in Montego Bay, St. James. Supreme Ventures Outlet and Auto Parts Store Robbed on Slap Road A Supreme Ventures Outlet and an Auto Parts Store along Slap Road in Kingston were robbed between Thursday night and Friday morning. The news understands that sometime after 7 p.m. on Thursday, the store clerk at the Supreme Ventures Outlet secured the establishment for the evening only to return to work on Friday morning to find the store open. Upon closer inspection, she discovered that several items were missing. A fan and a television set were among the stolen articles. As Win Walker, owner of Downtown Auto Supply, said he believes thieves gained access to the establishment through cuts made in a grill on the premises. The matter is being investigated. Suspect in assassination of Haitian president remanded in Jamaica. John Joseph, the former Haitian senator linked to the assassination of President Jovenel Moise, has been remanded on immigration charges in Jamaica until March 24. Mr. Joseph's wife and their sons were also remanded when they appeared in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court on Thursday. During the last hearing, the court was told that Mr. Joseph's wife escaped an attack before the family fled from Haiti to Jamaica. They were arrested in St. Elizabeth in January. IDB approves a $100 million loan for Jamaica's COVID-19 recovery. The Inter-American Development Bank has approved a U.S. $100 million loan to assist Jamaica to recover from the COVID-19 pandemic. The organization announced on Thursday that the funds will be used to strengthen public policy and the efficiency and effectiveness of fiscal management to address the health and economic crisis caused by COVID-19. Some of the measures include improvements in the targeting of social programs and the implementation of a tax credit program for micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises. The IDB financing will also support reforms to boost the economic and the fiscal recovery in the post-pandemic period. 17-year-old charged with a stepfather's killing A 17-year-old boy has been charged by the Portland police with a fatal stabbing of his stepfather. The teenager was arrested last weekend following the death of 42-year-old Anthony Hutchinson in the community of Nonsuch. It was reported that Mr. Hutchinson and the boy's mother had a dispute and she was stabbed several times with a knife. The boy went to his mother's assistance and allegedly disarmed Mr. Hutchinson, who was stabbed in the upper body. The man died on the spot. The boy's mother remains in serious condition in hospital. Former FLA director says he is being singled out and targeted. 
Former Firearm Licensing Authority board member Dennis Meadows on Thursday said he has been singled out and targeted by the Integrity Commission's decision to refer him to its Director of Corruption Prosecutions for a ruling on whether his approval of a firearm license for a family member was illicit. The Commission on Wednesday night released a report of its findings and investigations into allegations concerning acts of impropriety, irregularity and corruption in the issuance of firearm license after it convened hearings with the former and the present FLA officers. According to the report for the period of February 2016 to February 2018, FLA investigators did not recommend 30 out of 52 applicants to be granted firearm user license. It said notwithstanding the fact that these people were denied by the FLA board, they were subsequently granted the license upon a reconsideration of the board. It said Meadows had approved the firearm user license application of his family member who was convicted of attempted possession with intent to distribute cocaine in the United States. It further said there is no written record of a declaration of a conflict of interest made by Meadows, a former politician, as it regards the firearm user license application of his family member. Despite the fact that Mr. Dennis Meadows informed the Director of Investigations that a declaration of his interest concerning the firearm user license application of his family member was made, the DEI was not provided with any formal record of the same. Mr. Dennis Meadows provided contradictory statements to the DEI regarding whether he perused the application of his family member before the affixture of his signature for approval, the commission said in its report. On Thursday, Meadows, when contacted by the news, initially declined to comment on the commission's edict, stating that he was acting on the advice of his attorney. However, he questioned the motives of FLA officials, including CEO Shane Darlin, with whom he has had a war of words. Some people are just not seeing the machinations at the play. The fact that the report has come out, the question should be asked by Mr. Darlin, why was I targeted? Dennis Meadows alone can't grant firearms. There were other players, Meadows said. In the report, the list of firearm user license holders whose criminal antecedents were of a particular interest to the DEI in all the instances where Meadows is named as approving an application, he acts in conjunction with at least two other individuals. The question is why you choose to highlight my brother-in-law. If you notice, the report did not mention names. They were coded for specific reasons because those are confidential information, he said. However, he pointed out that the information of his brother-in-law was previously made public, putting my family at risk. And to know that the report has been made public and published, apart from the other issues, it begs the question why Dennis Meadows was singled out and targeted, Meadows said. They came at me as if I had the unilateral power to grant firearms. You see Darlene's name attached to a lot of these files, so why am I singled out? That is the question that has to be asked, he said. There were allegations of there being over 200 files of questionable character signed between 2014 and now. The investigations covered the period 2012 to 2016, which saw two boards. If you check the amount of work within the report, it's about 70-odd files. A pronouncement was made about 200 files and it was deliberately structured to suggest that those 200 files were related to me. A lot of overstatement was made deliberately to sensationalize and to target somebody, Meadows said referring to a recent press conference called by the FLA. Darling, during that press conference, had said that when he joined the FLA in June 2017, he had noticed that people of questionable character were being granted firearm license. He said a review by the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency and the FLA administration, headed by him, discovered hundreds of criminal elements from Westmoreland, St. James, Trelawney, Manchester and Clarendon, who received the gun license although the police had warned against granting any such license to the individuals. Darlin said his checks so far reveal more than 200 such cases of people with a criminal trace and a criminal conviction who have been granted firearm license. Among them, he said, was a corporate area don who got for gun license.
Meanwhile, regarding the Commission's statements about actions in granting a firearm license to a relative, Meadows said the facts are the facts. The Integrity Commission has done its work, it has made its findings, and we take it from there. In the meantime, former Ministers of National Security, the Jamaica Labour Party's Robert Montague, and the People's National Party's Peter Bunting, who were also pinpointed in the Commission's report, did not respond to calls from the news but issued a separate statement to the media. Bunting said headlines and other statements in the media in relation to the Commission's findings were, in his view, defamatory. As such, he said his lawyers have been instructed to examine the reports and act against the media houses unless apologies are issued and retractions made. Montague, in his statement, said the report is grossly misrepresentative and incomplete. According to the former National Security Minister, it was unfortunate that prior to the report being tabled in Parliament, and despite a request from him, he had not been allowed the courtesy of responding to that which the Commissioner sought to assert as facts. He said he has referred the report to his lawyers for further review. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.